Hello, welcome back. Today's video is all about using Ansible to install or upgrade network. Ansible is one of the most popular tools today in infrastructure automation space. It is an IT orchestration engine that can be used for configuration management, orchestration, provisioning, and deployment. I really can't compare Ansible with other similar tools in the market today just because I haven't used any yet. All right, so in today's video, we will be looking at how to install or upgrade Networker on Linux as well as on Windows. We are going to create Ansible playbooks for the tasks that are at hand. Now first let's start simple and then create a little more complicated playbooks with loops and conditional statements. I'm a newbie to Ansible 2, so if any of the viewers have any suggestions or can improve on the playbook that I have, please contribute in the comment section below so that it helps others coming here to see how to achieve these tasks. So I will create a page for this on my website and the link to that will be in the description as well. So let's get started. First of all, why would we want to install an agent using Ansible? Can't we just ask the OS admin to get this done? And yes, we have network tools like NSR Push to do an upgrade as well. Well, with the adoption of DevOps in the different fields in IT industry, there is more and more expectation from the engineers to automate all the tasks that would rather be done manually. So, when a company wants to move to a model of automating the general tasks using automation tools like Ansible, you can be ready with a solution. Alright, so let's get into what you are really here for. Installing, upgrading and uninstalling Networker using Ansible. First and foremost and very important, Please do keep in mind that this is not an Ansible tutorial and there are many tutorials out there and ebooks out there that can help you understand how Ansible works and how to structure an Ansible playbook. I recommend you to refer to them if you want to understand Ansible more in depth. But I will take you through the structure of the playbook that I will be using and about each tasks that is used in the playbook. So the tasks in Ansible are called modules and are well documented in the Ansible doc website which is docs.ansible.com. Refer to the description for the link to this website. Let's look at the first playbook which is a simple playbook for installing or upgrading Networker 8.2 on Red Hat Linux. So before going into the playbook, let's look at the inventory file that we are going to use with the playbook. There is a default inventory file that is defined in Ansible config and is uh, usually at the location etc Ansible hosts. Uh, but we will be using a user defined inventory file where all the information that we need is present. An inventory is a file that describes the parameter that are used to reach in the server you want to manage. So looking at the file that we have here, the first block defined by Linux underscore clients colon vars defines the variable required for the connection. So the part of the name Linux clients defines which group these variables belong to. Here Linux underscore clients belongs to the group which is just below the vars block. Vars means that this is a variable block and the next block is the Linux clients which defines a set of hosts that can be grouped. So in order to act on this set of hosts I can use the name Linux underscore clients in my playbook or with the Ansible command. Here we have defined a name for each of the host IPs that we have so that e it is easier for us to recognize the systems that might have issues completing a task when we are running the playbook or the Ansible command directly for the respective modules. But now let's hop onto the playbook and see what we have here. So playbooks are written in a format called YAML and the extension for this particular uh, file is .yml. And uh, let's go ahead and look and at what are the different parameters and information that you have to put into the Ansible playbook for it to be valid. 
All right, so if you see the playbook starts with three hyphens and if I scroll down, you will see that it ends with three dots. Now this is just a general indication indicating the start and end of a file. So this is not mandatory. It is just a good practice to maintain a common format for writing a YAML file. So you can use it or you could emit using it. It's up to you. The second line in the file is a parameter called a name. Now this is just an identifier. So you can mention as to what this particular playbook does so that it is easier to understand whoever is going to open this playbook for the first time. The next parameter is hosts and it defines the systems or the group name which is defined in the inventory that we are going to alter the configuration of using this particular playbook. The next parameter is become and it is used to ask Ansible to run the tasks that are mentioned in this playbook as a pseudo user. The next parameter in the file is tasks and this is where the real fun begins. Below this line we define the work that will be done by using the different modules in Ansible. So what exactly is module in Ansible? Well, Ansible modules are reusable standalone scripts that can be used by Ansible API or by the Ansible or Ansible playbook program. They are used to carry out the different operations on the target hosts that the Ansible supports. They return information to Ansible by printing a JSON string to standard output before exiting. So also in the list, if you scroll down on the same line, you have handlers. So handlers are tasks that can be initiated by other tasks only and only if they end successfully. So the two tasks that you see under the section are dependent on the other tasks in the playbook. So let's now look at each one of these tasks. So the tag name on each one of these tasks is just a human readable message that will help us understand to know which tasks are currently running on the so the first task in the list is to copy the installation file from the Ansible core server to the host where the installation needs to be done. So this task is done using the copy module. So you can refer to the documentation for this module to understand the fields used within the task definition. And these are the inputs to the module. So let me just quickly take you how to get this information uh, on the Ansible docs site. So you go to docs.ansible.com and then scroll all the way to the bottom here on your left hand side to go to module index. And on module index you can go to the file modules because this is an operation related to the file and you will see the different file modules here. And the one, the module that we are interested right now is the copy module which is this here. And you will see the different parameters that are to be used with that particular model. So if I go back to our file, we have parameters like source, destination, owner, group, force, and module. So if I hop back, we can see that we have something called a destination, which is the remote absolute path where the file needs to be copied. Then there is the source, which is somewhere down here, which is the local path to the file to copy to the remote server. Then we have owner, which is the name of the user that should own the file on the destination machine and so on. So force would generally mean that if there is a file which is already present, it will overwrite it. So it is put to no, stating that if it is already there, don't overwrite it. So this is the group name, owner name and the mode at which the file has to be set to when it is written on the destination server. So I hope that makes it uh, more clear on how to go and find a particular module in the doc dot ansible dot com website. So the second task that we have is to install the Netforker client and this task is using the yum module. So the yum module takes in two parameters that is a name and state. The parameter name defines the complete path to the file that needs to be installed. The parameter state is set to present which means that the task is for installing the package. 
if the state was changed to absent that would instruct yum to uninstall the package that would have been defined under the name so in the last line uh, of this particular uh, task you will see another tag called notify now notify is used to call another task whenever the current task completes successfully so in case the current tasks task fails then the handler task will not be notified to run so the handler task that we have here is start the network as service so if the install the network client binary task fails then the playbook exits and no other task is run but if it succeeds then the start the network service is uh, the next to run so this uses the module service and you guessed it right it starts the service if not running or restarts the service if it is already running the service module takes in three parameters one is the name of the module next is to enable the service if not enabled yet and the state parameter asks the service to restart or start the service so start the service if it is not running and restart the service if it is already running and on the next line you see another notify parameter which means that on successful completion of this task this task is going to notify another handler to start and this handler is the update server file which is again copy so we have already seen the copy module on the top which is used to copy a file from your local uh, ansible controller to the remote uh, system which is your target system here we will see how to write a content into a file on the target system for this you are using the parameter content instead of the source parameter and whatever string is defined by the content will be written into the file which is defined as the destination so if this particular file does not exist on your destination server then the copy module is going to create that file for you now we know the server's file on networker if updated requires the service to be restarted for that particular change to be effective so we are going to do another notify which is going to restart the network service this is a very simple playbook let's go ahead and uh, run this and see how it works so first let me show you on one of the target hosts and make sure that networker is not installed so rp minus and we grab for the to all right perfect and uh, so before you run the playbook uh, it would be a good practice to see if all the systems that you are using in the playbook are reachable so for this you have a module called ping and ping is not similar to how ping generally works on your system wherein it sends a packet over to the destination server and if you get a reply from that server then uh, your connection is established when using the ping module ansible is going to check if it is able to use ssh or whichever protocol is uh, mentioned as the connection protocol can be used to reach the destination so let's go ahead and use ansible command what is the group that we want to target which is clients and the module which is ping so let's go ahead and run that and if you see the output it is successful so that means that all our systems are responding now let's go ahead and run the ansible playbook that we have so to do this we will be using the command ansible playbook we will not be using the default inventory so we have to mention the inventory file that we are going to use with the minus i switch which is inventory.txt the one that uh, I had showed you earlier and then the playbook itself which in this scenario is anstub networker yaml let's see it is install or upgrade networker and there it goes 
So you will see all the tasks being run one by one. So the first task here is gathering facts. So the facts is run every time a playbook runs and you could disable it by mentioning uh, that in the playbook. But Ansible facts are system properties that are collected by Ansible when it executes on a remote system. So now that we have seen the tasks that are completed, so it gathered the facts, that is just a routine thing and Ansible does. Next, next task was the Ansible installation files. So it is mentioned with status OK because it already found that there was a, a file existing on the destination system. So it did not change anything. So that is why we have OK status. Then the next task was to install the network client binaries and it did that and it has changed that status on all of the three systems. Next, it started the network service because there was no service that was running. So you have the change status again. Next, you see that uh, this is an OK status again because there was already a service file on the system with the entry that we that we had put in so it did not change it but it checked it and it was okay and a recap that all the tasks that we had mentioned for this playbook have been completed successfully so let's just hop on to the target system one of it at least and check the installation so there we have it and if i go into the temp directory i will see that there is my installation file as well all right so this was for linux and so you see the entire process of writing and writing the playbook and running it is pretty simple and not at all scary now let's take a look at how to achieve the same result on a windows machine and unfortunately things are not that straightforward with windows so for ansible to communicate to a windows host and use a windows module the windows host must must meet minimum so for ansible to communicate to a windows host and use the windows modules the windows host must meet these minimum criteria ansible can generally manage windows versions under current and extended support from microsoft so ansible can manage desktop os's including windows 7 8.1 and 10 and server operating systems including windows server 2008 2008 r2 2012, 2012 R2, 2016, and 2019. Ansible requires PowerShell 3.0 or newer and at least .NET 4.0 framework to be installed on the Windows host. A WinRM listener should be created and activated. So the link to the guide to set up the Windows host for Ansible is in the description below and also on your screen right now. So you can go and look at that particular guide to see how to set up your Windows machine to be used with Ansible. So let's first look at the part of the inventory file that defines variables and host definitions to be used with Windows. So if I switch back. So the first part of our inventory was all about Linux. And now the second part is all about Windows. So I have used XXX here, but you have to give a valid IP address from for your Ansible host, which I have on my Ansible core server. So we have the Ansible connection variable set to WinRM here. So WinRM is short for Windows Remote Management, which is Microsoft's implementation of EAS management protocol. So based fire firewall friendly protocol that allows hardware and operating systems from different vendors to interpolate. Now let's take a look at the playbook for installing the agents on Windows hosts. Let's pull this. Let's go to Windows. So the structure is almost the same other than that we are not going to be using become yes here because that is to convert the user to sudo. And the requirement is that the user that you are going to use to run this particular Ansible task needs to have administrator privilege on the target machine. So the user again is defined in the inventory. So this is the Ansible user that is used. So looking at the different tasks in the 
uh, playbook. It is very similar to our previous playbook that we did for Linux. Like how we had in the earlier playbook, first we will be copying the installation file over to the target machine using the module WinCopy. Uh, these modules with win underscore as prefixes are mainly meant for uh, Windows modules. So let's just take a quick look at what we have at that location. So if I go ahead and copy this. Let's see. All right, so we have the client file, the extended client file, and then we have the cert file so i wanted to add a task for installing the certificate because of the issue that we are currently facing when upgrading networker from an older version that is 8.x to a new version and there's an issue because of the missing certificate and uh, so that is why this is added here which is to install the root certificate so this this is the path to the certificate which we had copied over then we have the store location which is a local machine the store name which is root and present means that we have to install the certificate next task is to install the networker client itself this is using the win underscore package module and uh, it is using these arguments which is used for windows for for silent installation of the Windows package because Windows usually is a wizard based uh, installation package so to activate the silent install you have to use this which is the state present means that you're installing the package and not uninstalling it and notify as we have already seen before is to notify another task to run whenever the current task completes successfully and this task is to update the servers file using WinCopy, so similar to what we had earlier. So WinCopy with content is going to update the file represented by destination with the content of the content parameter here. And this in turn is going to trigger or notify the restart the service task, which is going to restart the NSR exact service. So let's go ahead and try this as well. Before running the Ansible work playbook for uh, Windows target, uh, make sure that you have installed the PyWinRM Python module because this module is does not uh, is not included in the base package of Ansible and it needs to be installed separately in case you want to use any Windows machine as targets. All right, let's go ahead and try our uh, playbook. So before that, let me give you a tick quick tour of our uh, target server so you can see that we do not have any network installation neither there is anything in the C drive which we have copied over nor the EMC networker folder which is actually created after networker is installed so let's go ahead and uh, run our Ansible playbook so Ansible playbook we use our uh, custom inventory file, which is iInventory.txt. Then we have the YAML file, which is the playbook defining the tasks for installing Networker on Windows machine. Let's go ahead. All right, as I told you, this does not support become. So I think it, that is still in there. Let's go ahead and quickly remove that. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, that's in there. Tush, tush. So that should be good enough. All right, let's go ahead and try the playbook. Uh, but before you do any uh, tasks for Windows machine as target, run the playbook now so we have the command window ansible playbook we have our custom inventory file and the playbook for installing the networker on windows so we have the task gathering now this copying the files over to the destination machine this is going to take a while so i'm going to pause this video here and get back to you when the this particular task completes all right that task is completed and you see that the install of root certificate is also complete 
So the status is OK, which means that the certificate was already available. That's fine. Um, we have installed the client binaries now, updating the servers file, and now it is restarting the services. And we are done. So this was a pretty simple uh, playbook. So both the first playbooks that we used, because we did only a few steps here. Now, if we want to look at a more complicated playbook for, say, uh, upgrading multiple packages and where you do not want to use uh, multiple tasks uh, to make the playbook simple, so you can make use of loops in Ansible. And let's take a look at the one such playbook. So we have uh, this one here. So this particular playbook, as you can see, is for again installing and upgrading networker but here we are installing three packages uh, as versus the one that we did with the simple ansible playbook here we are installing the client package the extended client package and the man packages so the list is pretty much the same the task list if you can see because we have the task which copies the installation file server then we have a task which uh, is the yum uh, which is using the yum module which is to install the package and then we are using the handlers which are dependent on the result of your uh, task which is notifying the handler to run but it, the only change that you can see here is we are using the uh, with items tag or parameter here and this contains an array of string or names of the packages that you want to install and these strings are in turn being replaced in the parameter or very variable item so this is going to loop through all the elements in the array defined by with items and it is going to replace the uh, variable item every time the loop goes over the array and it carries out the task defined by the module here for the respective item that is defined in the array. So once everything completes and everything is successful, it is going to go ahead and notify as it did earlier. And it is in turn going to run the handler, start the service uh, network service, which is going to restart or start the service. Once that is done, it is going to create or it is going to call the servers update servers file which is going to go and add an entry for the backup server in the servers file and then again it is going to call the network server that's about it so that is how simple it is so i just have to make a few changes to the path and i will go ahead and run this particular uh, playbook for you all right let's go ahead and run this playbook Using the ansible playbook command, we give it an inventory which is a custom inventory and we say install upgrade network and it's gathering facts, copying the installation files over. Let me pause the video for a while until the copy completes. Okay, the copy is completed so the files are uh, copied over. That is why I have, we have the changed. It's installing the networker binaries now. So if you see it has changed and it has installed the client, the extended client and the LGTO man. Uh, the start service is also done on as changed and then it is updating the servers file which is done as well. Uh, here <coughs> you see that this is okay because if you remember we had installed 8.2 on these systems and that is why the service file was already there so it did not update it it just uh, put the status as okay so if you look at the playbook some of you might have a question uh, regarding the handlers wherein the install networker client binaries notifies the start networker service the start networker service in turn notifies the update servers file the update servers file in turn notifies the start networker service but the start networker service if you see it again notifies the update uh, servers file so wouldn't it go in a loop here no it wouldn't because the notify works only when there is a successful change or 
a parameter has been changed because of this particular module so if we go back to the output of our playbook and simple playbook uh, command you will see that the handler of uh, the task for networker client uh, installing the networker client binaries is notifying the networker service to be started which in turn is notifying the update servers file to be started but the servers file is already updated so it is not going to again notify the networker service to start and that is where the playbook exits if in case this had changed then it would again call the net uh, the um, networker service and the networker service would start or restart depending on whatever status it is in and it would again notify the update service file but the update service file would again be updated so it would have a status of ok and then it would exit so there is no loop or infinite loop that it would go into so I hope that uh, particular point makes it clear all right so that is all I had for you so before we leave let's just quit, take a quick look and see what's happening here so if we have see that earlier we had only the uh, client package now let's ins look at the rest of the thing so you see that the rest of the things are installed as well all right so this is all I had regarding the installation and upgradation of networker client package on Windows as well as on Linux using Ansible thanks for sticking with me till the end of this video I hope you found this useful if you have any questions or comments share it with our community in the comment section below or you can drop me a message at my Twitter account I will see you on another video Goodbye.